What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Schmozone Podcast. This is Dave Schmolenson. Today's episode is brought to you by Bluemon. Everybody always asks, what hair product does the Schmo use? Well, the Schmo uses Bluemon. This stuff is absolutely great. And I just came back from Abu Dhabi where it was over 100 degrees plus humidity, and this stuff stays in my hair. They have the Ascend Volume Cream. Put this on, blow dry my hair. Then I personally use their fifth sample styling mask pomade. It works great. You guys can go check out their Discovery Styling Kit. And this hair product is amazing. It doesn't stick to your head, doesn't smell, and it works. Go to bluemon.com, use the promo code SHMO, and you will not regret it. Our other sponsor for today's show is FusionCBDProducts.com. There's a lot of CBD products out there. Fusion CBD products is what the Schmo uses. They have their capsules for energy and focus for pre-workout, their sleep and recovery. They got their CBD instant freeze, their, their rubs, their tinctures. Everything that you need, they have, and I love it. I see them sponsoring the bare knuckle fights too. Uh, a lot of M MMA fighters use it. Tiago Santos, I know, uses it. Good stuff. FusionCBDProducts.com, promo code SHMO. You will not regret it. Let's start the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Schmo Zone podcast. I'm Dave Schmolson, aka the Schmo. My co host is Helen E. Sports, and I want to give a quick shout out to John Brannigan in the UK for that new intro. Yeah, he did a great job with the graphics. I am absolutely stoked for today's podcast. We have a great guest today. Two great guests today. If you can't tell by the shirt I'm wearing, it's a golden day today. We have. Edmund Shabazi in the number nine ranked UFC middleweight in the world and coach Edmund Tarverdian in studio here on fight week headlining your first headline fight card right here in the UFC August 1st at the apex. How you doing guys? Doing good Schmo, doing good. Uh, excited for this opportunity. You know, it's been a while since we've been in Vegas. So I'm excited to be back here and to perform Saturday night. Likewise, doing good. We're excited. Excited to be here for him to show what he could do. In the octagon. I have to add, I love the new shirts, the new thank style you, and color. You. I feel like it matches the Schmo Zone. Of course, <laughs> yours is the OG shirt, right? Uh, it's, that's the yeah, that's <laughs> the OG, OG shirt. Boy shirt for sure. I feel, we'll get you guys some of these, no doubt. Yeah, and it's actually matching the uh, Schmo Zone yeah. theme colors yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the the Schmo Zone theme colors. <laughs> Funny how that too. works too. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like I earned this shirt when we uh, performed exactly. over at the gym a few exactly. months back. That that tough session you went through, right, with the the bike. The assault bike. You know, I want to bring that up real quick, that assault bike, before we get into a lot of things there. I, I feel like my cardio was so down that day. No excuses. I dogged <laughs> it. I want to perform. Was it five minutes, 100 calories? Yeah. I might have gone to 82. You got to like, yeah, 82, about 82. Next time I see you, I'm going to perform. Perform it. Did he do a good job, though? You he did a good job. Honest. For a first time, that was okay. a good job. For really. first it was. Time. Yeah. <laughs> I was in dog shit shape that day, and I vowed, this quarantine's actually helped me. Rediscovered P90X, so uh, I won't oh, do that shit. again. Okay. okay. <laughs> we'll not do that again. <laughs> Uh, we just came back from Fight Island. Uh, we are just catching up on our sleep schedule, but uh, we could not miss the opportunity to have you two in studio. I know you just drove down from Vegas, or sorry, we're in Vegas. From L.A. From L.A. Yeah. last night. You drove, not flew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's better to drive, I think, especially during these circumstances. Can't risk anything, so it's just me, me and Coach in the car. Just chilling in the car and put some good music on. Came here last night and... Had a good night's sleep, and now we're ready for, for the fight week. Uh, things to do. What time did you guys get in town? We got in, like, uh, I think by 12. Yeah. Oh, by midnight. Midnight, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Late drive. Late, Late drive, drive, yeah. After yeah after the classes so finished. So no traffic. Yeah, no traffic. It was, like, three and a half hours, or less than three and a half hours. It took. Fast drivers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the pedal, right? <laughs> the pedal to the metal. So let's start this off. You're 11 and 0. And 10 of your 11 victories have come by first round finishes. If that's not impressive, I, I don't know what is. And there is a huge opportunity right in front of you fighting the number eight guy in Derek Brunson. A lot of hype behind you, man. 
even for the people that don't know about you, they will know about you now, especially with the UFC literally being the only sport continuously putting on events week in and week out amazing opportunity for you to headline your first fight card for sure for sure you know uh again when you like you said we're fighting Derek Brunson number eight I'm number nine so it's a good uh if, if you look at the ranking wise it's a good step up uh to fight to fight each other and then we were supposed to fight in March originally so uh it got pushed back then to April then it was going to be somewhere in like July again and now it's in August so it's crazy to me because you were scheduled on that March 7th pay-per-view card yeah. uh, with the champ he was fighting on that card against Yoel Romero. Then you got pushed, I know, to the April 11th card in Portland. Then this COVID situation happened, and literally four months later, here we are. What is the psyche now? What was the past four months like for you, man, just not knowing? And also, we talked about this a little before we started. How come you weren't on the Fight Island cards? Man? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I even sent out, sent out a tweet like for the Robert Whitaker and uh, Darren Till fight. I said, if any one of them had gotten injured, I, I would be down to be a replacement, you know? And I let that tweet out. And then I, I was down to come to Fight Island. And it just like the, it ended up the matchmaker called us and told us we're going to be here. So, you know, Vegas is like a second home to me too. You know, I fought here so many times and it's a, it's a good opportunity for me. And then, well, one week ago, and it got announced that it's main event, so one more can you ask for, you know? Yeah, the last time I think you fought in Vegas, that was the impressive rear naked choke first round over Jack Marshman. Yeah, the last time in Vegas. Yep. yep. That was huge. First round, yeah. I remember that fight vividly. <laughs> and yeah. it's crazy to think that it was only two years ago you were on Dana White's Contender Series. Yeah. So is this going to be kind of... In a way, because um, remnants of that, right? Because kind of, kind of similar, yeah. Time. Like the no audience and stuff too, and yeah. and in Vegas, sure. yeah. I would say is it'll be kind of similar to that. And then, yeah, I was just seeing that they they had that new promo for the uh, contender series, so I saw myself in it. So it was kind of cool, cool to watch. And to think that it's been two years since that, it's crazy. You know, time's flying, and and the uh, improvements that I've made from now, from then to now, it's like it's it's insane, literally. So what was preparation like knowing since back in February, right, that you've known you're going to fight Derek Brunson? And obviously it's been a while now. Now it's what heading into August. So what is preparation? Did you have to change anything because it's been a longer time? No, for 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 the whole coronavirus thing, no, we didn't change it, change up anything. Of course, coach plans all the the scheduling and everything like that. And it went it went as planned. You know, we were still in the gym, whether if we were going to the gym, going to the track and then different gyms too and then we would go to coach's house too at the beginning and then once the fight got uh fully confirmed then we were in the gym like we're doing one-on-one -on -one sessions and we would coach would bring in the sparring partners we would work with and it all worked out perfectly i was going to ask you about that coach at the glendale fighting club what was kind of what were you able to do with the regulations going on in california with the COVID situation and bringing in sparring partners and the training situation like for Edmund? yeah during the lockdown it was tough a little bit you know but we had a few sparring partners that were willing to come we had our main sparring partner actually that really did uh, commit and we put some time in the gym but we we're trying to keep we we're trying to stay at my house so he was doing a lot of pad work and all that stuff once it opened up we had more work in the gym and now we're here you know it's just in lockdown again the last week and a half it's been locked down but the good thing is it's we fin finished all our sparring sessions so that was a blessing that we had that one month to open up and we're in the gym more often who were the sparring partners that you brought in yeah sparring partner i'm not gonna Secrets? tell you yeah, it's a it's secret fine. because yeah, yeah. just after, after the fight, fight. After, after the fight, fight yeah, it's fine yeah. sure. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that, that's good we'll, we'll leave it at that and uh, going back to what you brought up too like where I got the shirt when we yeah. did that fight that day. I think we were in town. It was November. It was the Logan Paul KSI 2 fight. Yeah. I ran into champ Israel Adesanya, and uh, he mentioned he's taken note of you. He he, nice, he brought nice. your name up. I just figured <laughs> I'd bring this up, too. He saw the training thing. He brought you up. And uh, now that you know this, uh, that recognition, you're 22 years old. How does that make you feel? It's awesome, you know, getting uh, recognition from the champ right now. And... Me, like, my goal is to be the youngest champion, to be the champion and be a dominant champion. So um, that would be an amazing fight for me in the future. And I would love to put my skills up to test with Alessania. Yeah. Now, Coach, <laughs> obviously you have a good eye for stars. You know, you've trained Ronda Rousey, superstar Edmund Shabazian, a rising star. When you look at these athletes, what qualities do they possess, in your opinion, that makes them those stars? 
Uh, it's their personality and their work ethics, mostly. They got great personality. They know that they're a student and they learn every day, train hard every day. And the heart, of course, everything just it's it's a bonus, everything they have. But uh, it's the quality and the personality they have. And, you know, somebody like Edmund, I've known him from a little kid. So uh, training Ronda was a bit different. But with Edmund, it's like my own like little brother that I guided and um, it's a blessing, but he, he has all the tools, you know, he's just like his weight right now. Like I've worked with many athletes, many champions and in boxing also their weight, everything sometimes becomes a struggle because of their personality, because how of their nerves and everything. But he's so calm and calculated. He's, he's down to what, 195 right now and he's been eating you know normally and he cuts down from 217 so it's like yeah. everything goes uh, normal because of the smile i guess he has you know <laughs> he's always positive and that positive energy helps him do everything properly so it's um he, he's had that since he was a young kid when i noticed he would spar with the pros when he was 15 16 go to competition with world-class fighters and in the gyms whether boxing champions he never cared and he would always get out um, hard sparring session, difficult. We, even if he he would get beat, he was young sparring with pros, thirty and you know some records, great fighters, champions, and he would still walk out with a smile and wanting to learn and know what his mistakes were, so he could come back the next day and show how good he is. So, how young was he when you first saw that potential in him? Um, Phil, fourteen, fifteen. There's um actually there's a little clip on YouTube that he does like a smoker fight in a kickboxing match. And of course, his dad said that you guide him and you could do whatever. So he was underage and he was competing against an adult. So smoker fights, it's like no win or lose, but it's a tough sparring session. Basically, it is a competition, but they don't announce a winner or a loser because the state athletic commission is not involved. And it was a gym competition. So he fought with a 21 year old and I signed off for him that that's OK for us to do. And, you know, and he, he won that fight and he was he was so excited to fight in three rounds, you know, a good fight. Uh, and when he got out, I was like, this kid, you know, he could do it. He's so calm and calculated, and he listened to every advice I told him in there and uh, performed greatly, so I knew I really have a good fighter in my hands. I'm not sure if you posted that on your social media, or you posted that on your social media. I remember yeah. watching that. Is that how the nickname The Golden Boy was formed? What's the origins of the nickname The Golden Boy? Yeah, Golden Boy, um, Ronda, was, Ronda was always saying, uh, not Golden Boy, let's call him Edmund the End because he's going to end people's career as, <laughs> as you were talking about, like having 10 knockouts in the first round. So, you know, uh, and then, but Golden, he's, he's got such a great heart. Edmund's such a great kid. And, um, you know, with that in the gym and all my friends coming to the gym and liking him and taking him out, not even sometimes they come in and not say hello to me and they go to Edmund first and take him. I'm like, where'd Edmund go? You know, he's with my friends talking outside or after, of course, workouts. And, uh, because of how good he was, we named him the Golden Boy. He has a great heart, and he's he's got a golden heart. So it's not like it's about competition, winning something, a gold medal. It's more his heart. That's why we call him the Golden yeah, Boy. Yeah, and Armenian, like, Golden Boy means, like, Voski yeah. Like It's like a good saying when you good say, saying. like, to a good person, like, the humble. Or, I'm not trying to like, brag. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, that's what it like, means. True, like a good true. person. That's we all yeah. know you're humble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned you want to be the youngest champ. Yeah. And I know Macy Barber <clears throat> is in competition with you. I know she's had a little setback here, torn ACL. Born in 97, 22 years old. What's so unique and interesting about your situation, you're growing up in this era where MMA is coming into fruition in mainstream sports, whereas you don't have to just focus on one discipline. You studied all the different disciplines, all the different aspects of your MMA game. It puts you in a very unique situation. Which discipline right now at 22 years old do you feel is your strongest? I feel is my strongest. Every, every discipline, honestly. You, you know, gotta give I, me one. I, got, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because growing up doing all the aspects, competing in all the sports, like, I feel like I'm well-rounded everywhere, so that that's why, like, I'm, I feel like I'm good at, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm, like, I competed in everything, and, like, I did pretty good in, in each thing, so that's why, like, a combination of all of it together like makes me a big threat coach give us his no. strongest i'm asking for the weakest i'm asking for the strongest <laughs> strongest I, I mean you guys watch his fights he has a head kick knockout he has submissions he has takedown wins and see that's the thing so yeah he like puts I it have, together i have a wrestling win i have a 
submission went and out, only in 11 going. fights you know so, it's yeah. not like it's so 30 <laughs> a lot of fighters have like 20 30 fights and they have only one they have either submissions or they have knockouts right and then some have both but he has kick knockout also so a lot of people say oh this person can't kick or this person could only punch he wrestles and he boxes so he has pretty much everything and but i feel like of course i i you know uh, i'm a, i'm a striking you know I, I like striking so his punching power and it's 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 <laughs> tremendous i know that anybody he touches in there you know they're gonna drop and it's because of the amateur circuit he's been into in the amateur boxing competitions and he was actually telling me that he says coach when i get married and have a son i would love for him to do the boxing amateur program the usa boxing program yeah, and i want to sure. be involved in that that going in the morning weighing in finding a fight finding an opponent and then tournaments you fight you win you weigh in the same day again you fight again you win you weigh in again so all that difficulty and all that the program made him i think into who he is actually today in the morning when he was uh, running i was telling him that if you you competed one more um in the because before the olympic trials you know he's he was still uh, so low in weight he was just growing and he was only 17 competing against 23 24 year old guys you know bigger than him 6 6 you know strong physically and yeah i was fighting at 2 uh, for boxing I was 91 at 12, minus 91 kilos, kilos minus. when i was like 180 80 85 yeah pounds, so 17 years that's why he didn't make his professional mma career right away when he turned 18 i wanted his body to develop to figure out either we're gonna fight at 170 or 185 so all those that that experience i think and i was telling him yeah today when he was running um, that he would have you know this olympics if we if it of course 2021 if it if it happens which it will you know we're gonna get through this and i was like you could you could have been in the u.s team and been in the olympics but you know we're in a good position right now he's he's doing what he loved to do yeah. what he wanted to do from a young kid so do you For think sure. you would compete in the Olympics? Is that still a possibility, or is that uh, awesome? not? Not after doing all these, I think I made yeah, pro like, fights. I don't know, but I don't know. but I was saying if he didn't, because we 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 have our boxing coach in our gym also that, you know, when I was busy doing all the programs with him and I was competing with Ronda, Ronda was competing and I was traveling. I would send him with one of my boxing coaches, Coach Albert, that. Uh, took Edmund to a lot of the amateur competitions because they would stay together. You know, it would take five, six days, so it was a lot of work. And we were he he before Edmund turned pro, he was like, no, let's keep him in the amateurs. No, no MMA. He's gonna become the next Olympian. <laughs> you know, in that way. So we believe that, and we know the skills, uh, the striking skills are at a high level. I know that, and I've seen him compete, not only just by in the gy gym work by competition also. But I see as it. I see it as it's one win either way, right? Yeah, Whether exactly, the yeah, Olympics exactly, now exactly. undefeated. But coach, you mentioned kind of talking about his weight and him being so young and kind of, you know, determining what weight you're at. You're only 22 years old. Is 185 something that you foresee yourself, you know, your whole for, for now, for sure. Yeah, 185 is is the perfect weight for me. But then I think when I get older, I'll eventually move up because I'm constantly growing like each camp I, I notice my myself growing like my muscles my body like my height I'm growing still so yeah, I don't know, I maybe, 205 yeah, even maybe. heavyweight why not maybe yeah maybe you yeah, could yeah, do it all he sparred with heavyweight since he was like 15 <laughs> years old yeah, yeah. We, we had Travis Brown there sparring he sparred <laughs> with all of them <laughs> yeah no problem <laughs> your, your strength and abilities are very deceiving and the one thing I notice and I've noticed this in a fighter in like Thug Rose because we just saw her at uh, UFC 251 in Floyd oh, yeah, Island very good very, good very excited for her very good performance both of you put on this kill switch when the the door gets locked in the cage because you're so friendly now and it's like we can be all buddy buddy but no way in fucking hell would i ever <laughs> want to be locked inside a cage with you and do work with you because it's like there's literally a switch your demeanor your facial expressions you stone cold change yeah yeah how do you do that or what the hell are you thinking about in those moments yeah i got i got that question before too like these past couple of interviews i've done uh that switch that switch is like i honestly it just happens when i when i when it's fight time it just turns on i guess and like it's all full focus and ready to kill you know it's just me and going out there and performing it's it's something that's kind of like undescribable because it's in the moment you know but i i definitely feel like i have that switch that i turn on and Boom! Fight time, fight I, mode. I think that the, he he's so intelligent. In the in the in the gym, he's had there has been sparring sessions when I told him I need you to perform this day, like I need you to fight your hardest. And uh, the reason was that is to establish some of the things, the finishes he has today. 
and we've done that for a long time. But if he has to learn, he learns. But he's such a um, a kid. Uh, he's such a great athlete that he believes into the program that he's in. And I think when it comes down to competition time, he knows that that day is the most important. So of course he's going to go in there and turn it on because yeah. he doesn't do that every day at the gym. A lot of people do that every day at the gym. They all oh, want to show that they're the best to the coach or something. You got to show that you're the best when you're competing in that octagon. When the it's the day, yeah, exactly. When, on, yeah. Because that day is the most important day. So why would you do that every day and then come to that day and not be able to do it or be drained or not be psychologically ready? So I think he just understands the whole uh, program in perfectly what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's here for. He knows what the Saturday is going to happen. What's the driving force? What's the motivation? What's the end goal that you want uh, for your legacy? You no, know, like at first, whenever I was, I was a kid, I was I was always thinking, oh, I want to make it to the UFC, this, that. But then, so I got to the UFC, but it's like I'm not satisfied. You know, I want to keep going. I want to keep improving. I want to be young champion. I want to be champion, and then. I know when I get there, I'm gonna want more. Like I want, I'm not gonna be satisfied because I'm always, I always have that competitiveness in me, and uh, I'm, just, I'm just so passionate about this sport, and I've loved it from a young age. So like growing up doing this and only this uh, really brings that motivation in me and that that drive. I think that having that mindset though is what separates great from good, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, when you're passionate about something and you love doing something and you. You have a goal in mind, you know, nothing will stop you. Now, is it true when you were younger, you got into this because you were so shy? At first, no. I got into uh, karate. I started yeah. at karate at the gym. And swimming? I was a, and swimming, yeah, because I was a fat, ch chubby kid. And <laughs> I just wanted to lose weight. My dad put my brother and I in the karate program at, at Glendale Fighting Club. And then we started and then we started, I started losing weight. I was doing that and I was swimming and then like... Uh, I started noticing, you know, like we're competing more and doing good in competitions. And then like um, I left swimming, so I, I fully dedicated to to the gym and the rest was history. <laughs> I can relate to being a chubby kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You should see his videos. <laughs> Unrecognizable, but it's a little bit different for me than it is for you. Uh, but you still swim now too, right? Yeah, yeah, I still, yeah, I still, yeah. But former whenever, swimmer. Oh yeah, awesome, <laughs> yeah. awesome. Also, yeah, I was in the actually, I was like in the swim team too back back then. So me too. Uh, I'm a good swimmer, but I don't think I'm like. Super, I've seen. I think I've seen videos of you swim, <laughs> swimming. Yeah. <laughs> And somewhere she, and she's getting back and she's got olympic goals so that's why i brought nice, that up for you nice, maybe you guys awesome. are both yeah. in the olympics yeah. together <laughs> that would be awesome <laughs> that would be amazing i did want to bring up to uh your division the middleweight division i think a couple of weeks ago when we had dana white on our podcast and we've had some other people you ask them what's the hottest division in mma bantamweight division but with how things are shaking up and the fights we just saw recently the whitaker till fight that we just brought up I think your division, if you look at like the guys in the top 10 right yeah. there, you right being at the onset, you being number nine, straight freaking killers. Yeah. There are so many good guys in your division. If you get the victory, and we're not going to look past Derek Brunson, For sure. you're into killers murder row. When you look at this division, who do you think will be the champion, let's say, three, four months from now? I think, I don't know, my, my prediction is that Adesanya beats Costa. Okay. So I think Adesanya will retain his belt for for a little bit until I come. <laughs> you think you're going to be facing him? Yeah, that, in the that future, would, yeah. And you would sure. be earning the gold strap by beating him. Yeah, yeah. That's how you. That, that's my. It. That's my. That's my. Yeah. That's how I envision it. Interesting. What do you think, Coach? I I agree with Edmund. Um, you know, Israel is more i think striking is technical better timing and acosta is strong physically but you know i've seen him get touched and dropped and with shots that he shouldn't i think he just is physically very strong and wants to go for the finish it's going to be an exciting fight regardless but um one thing is that it when it's edmund's uh turn um you know again he's done it from some such young age and you know with us and i've seen different many styles of fighters and what we what he has is he's learned to fight all those styles from a young age and a lot of people nowadays they were talking about styles like uh, Till was saying that my style would be better against um, the champion Israel instead of what I fought uh, this week uh, Whitaker which I agree but 
Uh, with Edmund, I don't see uh, no difference if they give us after this fight. It's Whitaker, Till, or it doesn't matter who it is. Jerry Cannonier, yeah, it doesn't, Romero, I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, all of them all are the, good. All those guys, are, all, all of them are good, yeah. and it's all of them. It's going to be a good fight. And like, I, I would love to test myself against them because I want to be the best in the world. And to be the best, you got to beat the best. So it's it's more and more. It's motivational, you know, to fight those guys and like have a good competition in front of you. And when you're training for that and preparing for it, like Brunson too, you know, he's been a top top 10 contender for a while now. And preparing for him, it's like, I'm like motivated to be be the best on fight night. And uh, yeah, it's just like it, that extra bit of motivation that you got to make a statement and uh, be, a, be a real good, good contender. And it's interesting too, because some of those guys in the top 10 were former welterweights that moved up to middleweight. I know yeah. like Calvin Gastelum, Robert Whitaker, Darren Till, that's yeah. three of them right yeah. there. Yeah. Mm, that were true. 170 guys that moved up to 185. Yeah. And this has been your weight class all along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my my weight class from the beginning. Of course, at first I started, I was smaller, like physical wise, but then physique wise, I, I gained muscle and stuff. So I grew into my body a little more. I think I'm still growing. Still growing. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, for now, like 185, I, I'm a solid 185er. And you brought up Aldo. We're talking about Aldo throwing all the leg kicks, like that type style when he was just a dominant featherweight. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what you kind of see your game as in martial arts. Plus obviously like a, the, the wrestling and oh, yeah, all, yeah, the like all, all, all the aspects, you know, like I, I like to consider myself not just a striker and not just a wrestler. A mixed martial artist. I, I'm. I feel I'm good everywhere and wherever the fight goes, I'll be ready for. Yeah, all the styles he'll be ready for. I'm curious to get your thoughts on what you thought of Jack Hermanson's performance over Kelvin Gastelum. I think it was a good performance. He he caught him, you know, with a heel hook, and I didn't. There wasn't much action on on the yeah. feet because they clinched up right away. But for to get a heel hook, it's kind of hard to do in MMA because it's it's rare. Like you don't see heel hooks happen often, and to get a guy like Gaslam was pretty. It's a good win for him, for yeah, sure. Very good. What about Whitaker versus Till? Whitaker versus Till Till. That was a good technical fight. I liked it. Um, it was a close fight. I had a two-two going into the fifth round, and then Whitaker, uh, I think, won that last round. But some people were saying Till won that last round because he like caught him with the elbow and cut him up. So. Um, if it got either way, I wouldn't have like close fight. Yeah, it was close a close fight. fight. I wouldn't have like said, "Oh no, it was a robbery this that." But it was a good fight, a good technical fight, and I think they were a little bit uh, like passive against each cautious, other. They didn't. Yeah. They cautious. Yeah, they didn't like want to go for the finish too much. They were just like tapping, moving, tapping, moving, and nothing nice too distance. Crazy. Distance good, fight. Good yeah, fight, yeah. Distance they didn't want to engage yeah, too much. Technical. Technical, Even though like yeah. they they both like caught each other with one shot, but it, that was like when they closed the distance real quick and. That's when it happened. It was interesting because I was going to wonder, I was wondering at the time which Robert Whitaker was going to show up. The mm -hmm. former champion versus Psyche after losing the belt to Israel yes. yeah. over in uh, the, the Melbourne, Australia fight card. Which mm -hmm. one would show up? But as you mentioned, like the way I saw it too is I think Till might have landed more of the significant shots, but yeah. I think Rob had the volume. Volume, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like yeah. the grittiness and he looked like he wanted, he he wanted, wanted a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. A little bit I more. I think yeah, exactly. Till was just a little bit waiting off a little bit too long. I think he was looking for the counter, but when you're looking for the counter and you're not, you know, you're not working, you're not outworking the guy, you got to throw a little bit more because then it goes to the judges. Sure. You didn't catch most of the counters and then you're not busy. So who wins? That's why they gave it to Whitaker. I think yeah. Whitaker yeah. wanted it a little bit more. He engaged a little bit more. For sure. By the way, I, I see the 818 on the sleeves. I just always, noticed that. Yeah. The branding. Yeah. That's why I, the schmo with the 312 for yeah. the area codes, man. That ain't branding What's on the back? The back here. Golden Boy and his name. Nice. Nice. Golden Boy Shabazz. And we got the... The yes. branding. The GFC logo. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, Thank you, guys. Thank Fantastic. You. Coach made it. Coach designed this. So. Oh, no, yeah. he's cool talented. Yeah. 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 <laughs> What'd you guys see... <laughs> I don't want to mispronounce his name. Kazma, um, <laughs> two fights, yeah, yeah, yeah. ten days. That's 11. awesome. That's I awesome. think I I think he landed. It was like 194, 198 to two. He took literally two shots in two <laughs> different fights. That's crazy. Yeah, I, it's a, a no one's ever performed that quickly back to back in UFC history. Like, where do you see that guy's potential? At 170 pounds in the welterweight division, are we looking at a future champion right there as a welterweight? I think, uh, yeah, he has for sure potential. Again, like he has to fight a top-ranked guy before, like we really get into talks like that. But 
based on those two performances, one was in middleweight, one was in uh, welterweight. Yeah. He looked good. He looked really good and confident, uh, very confident. Yeah, very confident. And what he he like picked the guy up and took him to the other guy's corner, right? And then finished him there. That's what he does. So it was it was cool and and very good performances. He got like two bonuses too, right? Yeah, <laughs> amazing. So that's cool. You know, it made that's a quick awesome. quick hundred thousand in bonuses. He's in week. <laughs> setting an example for future fighters, how to make some quick cash, right? Yeah, Especially yeah, during exactly. this time. Exactly. Lanky like that, tall, and being, you know, wrestling with that uh, physical ability, it's very nice. It's yeah, very yeah. Very good, good. Definitely. That that lankiness helps him, I yeah. think. Because there's, uh, there was like this, what was he a Russian Saitev, goal? yeah. But, yeah, Saitev, his name's, last name's Saitev. Three-time like, Olympic gold medal. Two-three-time Olympic gold medals. Again, tall, lanky guy like that, and like, he was really good because of his like height and his ability to like do like the trips and like close distance. It was really good. Now, some people have compared him to Habib, and today it was officially announced that Habib versus Justin Gaethje on yeah. October twenty fourth. Just wanted to kind of get your guys' thoughts on that and prediction. Yeah, that's a good fight. You know, uh, Gaethje looked really good in his last fight against Ferguson. I thought Ferguson was going to win that fight, but. Coach was uh, saying, "No, no, Gage is gonna win this. Go, Gage is gonna win this." Probably bet on Gage. He bet on Gage. Yeah, And then, and then, like Gage started tagging him up with a jab and like keeping his distance, clipping him, moving, and he, he looked really good. And uh, I think that's gonna be a really good fight, him and Khabib. And le- like, if Gage gets the stuff to takedowns, I think uh, it's gonna be a good night for Gage. What do you think? I think it's yeah, it's gonna be a very, very technical fight that one's going to want to stand up and you know Gage has a good wrestling background too and I think he's physically stronger than any of the athletes and mentally that any of the fighters that Khabib has faced but again um, because of Khabib's situation right now and his dad passing away God rest his soul but uh, how much motivation will that give him and how he will turn around from that and come back um, it's going to be very um, interesting to watch psychologically how he will be prepared and how much would he want it because even getting caught with the shots, let's say I give the edge to Gagey on the stand-up, but how much would he want to grind it out? How well is he going to prepare in this training camp when his dad's not there and what, how it's going to motivate him? Um, it's his belief, his heart. So, you know, I want to see him 100% prepared, and I hope he does that for his father. Yeah, for sure. You said you bet on that fight. Have mm-hmm. you ever bet on one of his fights, or would you bet on his fights? In the <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I always, I always bet on my fights. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and then he gets sports with last night. Yeah, he gets commission too. You're the blonde. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's why you stayed there last night. <laughs> now I'm putting two and two together. Yeah. I like saying that. Yeah. And um, you're obviously represented by a legend, yeah. one of the greats of all time, pioneer in the mm-hmm. sport, and Ronda Rousey. And coach, you obviously worked with her. Any similarities in their rise and their stardom? Um, mm-hmm. Let's start with there first. Yeah, um, yeah. Actually, t- yesterday was one of the days I noticed the similarities because is this the first time we drove to Vegas together? And I would drive to with Ronda to Vegas a lot when she would uh, fight as the main event. And yesterday I noticed that even though I didn't even tell him, but it was in my mind when I was driving. I was thinking about all the moments and that just that quiet ride and then listening to music and then uh, interacting and speaking to each other. Um, the way I think what um, the way they're prepared and the way like what Rhonda did with that short amount of time, how great she was and winning all the, you know, two titles, strike force and UFC and, you know, putting women on the map and all that. It was very, it was great, and I think Edmonds doing the same thing in his in in the middleweight division. You know, he's been a pro for I think three or three years, three or years a few now, months, yeah. yeah. And you know, that's not that much of a long experience being a professional athlete. And him him being in in a main event in the UFC says a lot. And all the knockouts in the first round, being unique in that way, also um, says a lot. So I think his age, you know, what he's doing. I think that they're unique in the way that. They're not only in here just to compete or just to win. They want to win with a fashion and they want to be noticeable and they want to be unique. Unique, And so you could say, Edmund, that, that kid could fight. You know, that that's the guy. That's the guy we want to watch in the UFC, just like what Ronda did. You know, she was... She was the one that you want to watch, even if she was a, it's a she or he, you still wanted to watch her, you know, male, female doesn't matter. So I think Edmund has the same ability and is showing it 
and yes, he wins the title, then we could talk more about it, what the similarities are. But that girl was a champion, and I know he's going to be a champion. Is that why you guys decided to drive together? Uh, to no, make, I think oh. it just I think it just happens. But mm -hmm. since we've been doing it for a long time, and we plan it automatically, we plan it in a way that I've done it already before, so it just works out that way. So it's not like I want to do things that I've done with Ronda with him, so I could uh, live that moment again. No, now we 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 passed that. We have to have more champions in our gym, and he's going to be the special one. That's about it. How has that relationship evolved over the years? Because I know you've been working with her since you were a teenager and she was in her heyday. Oh, it's cool. You know, yeah, like you said, I've worked with her whenever, whenever I was a teenager and her from the beginning, like seeing that rise firsthand and seeing her with all that media and like the championships and all that, like the hype and everything like that, uh, I, got, I got to experience that and just being next to her and like witnessing all that was incredible you know it, not a lot of people get to see that especially like she became she was like a super she was a superstar so seeing that and seeing her rise so quickly was motivational for me and it inspired me to continue working hard and you know believing in myself and then my relationship with her has always always been good you know she i look at her like a big sister and uh she always when when she's in the room i always say she always has a positive energy to whatever she says, so um, I like to have her always by my side, and I I'm happy to have her as a manager and representing me. So it it's it's very cool. But has she come to the fights though? She hasn't came to the fights. No, I know that. Yeah. When is that going to change? Um. Soon. Uh, yeah. Soon. I think <laughs> she will. She will start making. She once will once start the audience coming. comes back, yeah, for sure yeah, she will. Yeah, next yeah, one. For yeah. Sure. Next one. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. She was supposed to come to for this one. She was. We had plans that she was going to come to this one, but before, like when Edmund had the fight, uh, when was it in March? March. Yeah. yeah. yeah March five. She was going to come to that one. Come, but things changed. But she will. She will. The right times will come. He's going to be ready for that title shot soon. So <laughs> we'll get. Yeah. We'll get that going. And I don't consider Helen and I traditional media by the sense, but how has she advised you on handling the media? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good question. I haven't talked to her much about like the media stuff, but she's told me like appropriate things to say and like the correct things to say, just so kind of stand out a little more. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's and fair. like tips, tips. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I know your older brother, he's also a pro. What's that yeah. dynamic and relationship like? It's cool, you know. We started together uh, training MMA, and to this day, we're both professionals. He was supposed to fight in, like, April, and the uh, whole yeah, thing what? happened with California, mm -hmm. and, like, now they're just opening up California again for a fight, so we got to get him scheduled soon to see when he's fighting and uh, make it, bring him to the UFC very soon, too. I remember last summer at the Contender Series, your brother was fighting, yeah. and uh, his I've never seen this before. His girlfriend ran to the cage. This yeah, is a very yeah. emotional <laughs> night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, Whoa, are they still... I don't know the dynamics. Yeah, yeah, no, are no. they still together? Whoa, course, how yeah. did, what was the aftermath of all that? Because no, I'm not sure a lot of people know about that. We were there. Yeah. We, made, we watched that whole thing go yeah, down. Yeah. Never seen that before. No, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure it's like, happened, but like, I've never seen that before. Like, our girlfriends, they get, like, really emotional and, like, so, like, nervous during the fights, and, like, it's kind of, like, uncontrollable for them i guess so <laughs> running to the cage yeah it was just like the emotions and you know like it's like it, i can understand i can understand it's like a, it's a tough moment in that time like especially after that fight and yeah like just it was an in the moment thing i believe and uh, it's kind of like un uncontrollable in my opinion <laughs> yeah yeah I, was I reading it somewhere? I saw, but your brother was supposed to potentially be on this fight card or, or something. Like, what, it what? was like a, no, no, no. It was, a, it was, a, it was just like a rumor. It was <laughs> a rumor. I think someone switched it on Wikipedia or something. I no saw. Way, yeah. Well, they are. <laughs> we were in Fight Island, right? There's a plus eleven hour time difference. We are disconnected. We're the other side of the world for three plus weeks, which we're still adapting to this American yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> Not that it's difficult, but I thought I saw that. It was just it caught me like oh yeah. He was telling me that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I thought if that was the case, man, that's a lot to balance, especially for you, yeah, coach, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, headlining yeah, yeah, your yeah, first yeah. fight. Like, the Shabazzian so, bros fighting the on the Shabazzian yeah. card. Yes. <laughs> so that was just a rumor. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was just yeah. a rumor. And it was never going to fully happen. No, no, no. Okay. It wasn't happening. But was, hopefully soon. He'll... Hopefully soon, yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. For sure it'll happen soon. I believe him. I believe in my brother, and I know he's going he's gonna to be here very soon. 
Did the cage size difference, does, has, did, mm-hmm. does that play out to you? Because I know this one's 25 feet versus the traditional 30, 30 feet. 30 feet, yeah. Uh, uh, no. He's going to have to difference. fight a little yeah, bit more. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to like engage in a fight more because it's like more of a foam boot. So I like that. I like getting, getting into fights, getting into, you know, dirty boxing a little. <laughs> so yeah. it won't make a difference for me. I know, like they say, it's good for the wrestlers, so. Let him, let him wrestle me. I'm, I'm ready for it. <laughs> it's going to be quiet there. We'll be there. We'll see yeah. you. And without the crowd and everything like that, you're going to be able to hear the commentary. I mean, I know everyone's been talking about yeah. that. I'm, I'm not sure who's commentating on this fight. I'm assuming John Anik will be one of them. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm not sure if it's Bisping, uh, Paul Felder. I'm not sure who's doing it. But you're going to be able to hear what they say. <laughs> I mean, is it something you're going to pay attention to, I, or are you just going to listen to the coaches? I <laughs> honestly just like whenever, it's weird, whenever I'm fighting, uh, I just hear my coaches. Maybe maybe now that it's on, I could probably hear, but like my my focus and everything just like goes towards my coaches and hearing coach. I mostly hear Coach Edmund like talking from the corner, and that's that's all I hear, literally. Like even if the crowd is loud or anything like that, like all I hear is his voice. I remember like even uh, in Madison Square Garden, I was fighting, and then, there was a moment like the crowd started doing because I rewatched the fight. The crowd started doing like woo woo. They were like doing that, and then I had like even though it was like so loud in the building, I literally heard coach. You know, he's like, "Does it matter? Like, like the, they're I'm yelling like, like that." Doesn't matter like, what the crowd. The crowd saying, on "Yeah, the like fight. I just like literally because I his thought voice. I'm just he's young. I'm like, let him not get too aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm gonna knock this guy out right <laughs> now so the crowd can stand on his feet. <laughs> Take your time. That's yeah. the game plan. Stay yeah. on the game plan. Yeah. <laughs> so it's cool. Yeah, I just I just hear my coaches. What what a crazy world we live in! Because that UFC two forty four fight card in New York, the president was there. Yeah. It was you were in the mecca in Madison Square Garden. You go from that crowd, that size, that magnitude to this to no crowd, to right? no yeah. crowd, <laughs> and headlining. And headlining. <laughs> the change is crazy. Yeah, it's like to me, uh, whenever yeah, on an outside perspective, that's a crazy change. But me, when I'm in the fight, it doesn't matter to me. Crowd, no crowd. Of course, after the fight, it's cool. Like. You get the win and you see all like your fans and like your family there cheering you on that that's a cool moment that we won't get to see but uh for me fight time is fight time you know no and crowd I, crowd and i think matter. with experience uh, i mean i don't know how um, many train but you know edmund from a young age i would take him to wild card to spar and you have the downstairs room where world-class fighters come to spar and then freddie's of course watching and you got the great coaches there watching and you have to perform that day you're re- literally throwing down especially you know guys like pacquiao train there and fight there same way prepare so basically this is going to be the same thing yeah, so yeah. a lot of fighters train in their comfortable atmosphere all the time training in their a team they call it right okay it's a team it's great it's good but sometimes you need to get step out of that a little bit yeah and get I out the comfort zone get out of the sure. comfort zone and really throw down spar hard and you know, spar with somebody you don't know that's there that day to, they matched you up. You know, I spoke to Freddie, you got a good guy at this weight. Yeah, no problem. We got this guy. He's ready for you guys. Boom, you go in next day and you're throwing down. You know, yeah. you're really yeah. sparring. So he has the benefit on that age. And so it's like a sparring session for us. It's yeah. nice that wild card is like 20, I mean, I say 20 minutes away, yeah, but 10, it's LA 15 traffic. Minutes from 15, minutes from our gym. 15, yeah. 15 minutes from our gym. Yeah. We get there. Yeah. yeah, it's so close. and like It's close, but you know how LA traffic is. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Sometimes but, it takes 30 minutes for us to get back, yeah. but we go at a good time. We go at a good time in the morning, so and that's when like the, the sparring is like packed, packed. You know, there's all the bodies you could work with the downstairs yeah the downstairs okay. yeah because yeah. yeah. you got to yeah. call him <laughs> like I you get the exclusive with yeah exclusive. <laughs> that's where we've been for the pacquiao yeah. media stuff yeah. uh that's such a great weapon at your disposal you brought up Aldo uh, Aldo earlier. But no, I said all the all... areas were ready to fight in. You thought it's Aldo, but that's fine. You can ask <laughs> oh, okay. I like Aldo. It's okay. Yeah. I, I thought you were <laughs> no, I said we're ready Aldo. in Aldo. We're oh. like all areas. Well, it's okay. because ready I'm... to fight in all areas, basically. All, you know, some people like fighting close, distance. He's ready for all of it. So well, yeah. he said all the those. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. You can, well, you can well, ask about Well, then Aldo. Let's, let's say, who are some of your favorite fighters to watch? And who's okay. who do you think has got the best skill set? And I mean, just some of your favorite guys and some gals to watch. my favorite guys. Yeah. Um, I like one of my favorites of all time was George St. Pierre. No doubt. Because he, he, like, makes up everything, literally. In striking to wrestling, distance, and, like... Is he your GOAT? He's one of the GOATs for sure, Yeah. I think so. There's one goat. Who's the goat? <laughs> or who's tied as goat? Who's tied as goat? I don't know. I don't know. I think John Jones is probably one. Is okay. the goat? Yeah, John Jones is the goat. I like John Jones as a fighter. 
uh, one of my favorite fighters. And then who else? I I really like I like Con I like watching Connor. I I like him as a fighter. I think he he has lots of skills and he's very he's a very talented and good fighter. Even though people are like say like oh no this that but i i think he's a really good fighter in my opinion so him and then who else do we got i sh you know who's a good guy uh that guy that figueredo i think he's really good yeah. davison yeah he's a good fighter what i like about him and what he just did because we just saw him against joe benavides obviously he missed weight for that title fight yeah the first one right but he had no problem saying all right yeah i missed weight oh i still i don't have the title yeah. I'll still beat him again, and yeah. I'll still fight for him. But you still on the other end of the spectrum. Got a feel for Joe Benavidez because he's one of the nicest guys. Yeah, very, nice very cool guy. Very very cool yeah, guy. Nice and guy. yeah, like having that opportunity, you know, to fight again for that belt and not not like reaching the goal. I know it, it sucks definitely, but I mean, they say the fight game is an unforgivable sport, right? So I mean, that it happens, you know. What do you make of some of the characters making those huge rises in popularity and in today's MMA? I'm thinking of guys like Sean O'Malley, you know, that are making a lot of noise and stuff yeah. like that. The popularity side of yeah. things, obviously Israel, just uh, Orhe Masvidal, just guys of that type of nature and their styles of promoting themselves in the fight game. I think I think it's cool, you know, especially like for like a business standpoint, it's really good for the UFC and uh i like it i like it you know it brings up hype it brings up more attention to that card whenever they're on it like if there's like let's say if i'm on that card and like there's a big big name on it so like it could like my my performance could stand out too in, in such a big card like the past previous the previous fights i've done it was on big cards so getting to perform under like a, a card of john jones or Moss Vidal diaz and like john jones again and then like it's cool you know and it uh, definitely it brings eyes, brings a lot of eyes to the to the contenders and prospects rising. Now, Coach, I wanted to ask you, because earlier you mentioned that you've coached Edmund since he was young. Do you think there's more benefits in that by coaching someone when they're, you know, young and watching them and being with them as they grow and continue? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I know him very well. Mm -hmm. You know, when we prepare, I know what, how I could push him, what I could put in front of him that he could improve and what not to do so much, what to do not less, you know, and especially psychologically, you know, what words I use, what I tell them, how I tell them, uh, whether it's fight day, fight week, month before, two months before, or when it's off time, when we don't have a fight in front of us, what are we working for? What are we trying to do? Do we keep those guys in front of us every day or we improve on who Edmund is, first of all? So all this, I think it's uh, a lot of thought that a trainer should put, but knowing the kid makes it a bit easier. But again, even it makes it easier, but you still have to think about it. Every night, like, you know, I do before the fights, think about what I could do next day to improve Edmund's ability. And I think it becomes more of a personal relationship that you have to like the person that you work with, first of all, care for that person and understand that person, then give him the advice. So it's not only about teaching somebody how to throw a jab or a right cross a lot of people could do that it's more to to fighting there's more to fighting when did you find out that your fight next fight would be august 1st because march 7th was the original date and it kept getting pushed back was it your choice to wait this long or what was that process like in the matchmakers and and how had everything went down so i'll, I'll break it down so march we had the fight brunson got injured rescheduled for april coronavirus happened they said it was gonna be at apex and then it fully got canceled and then we had another day we wanted to like see if the brunson's available again for like the closed audience events maybe it was like florida or something like that they didn't um he was not available and then they offered like weidman but they said weidman at like 190 we said 185 we'll do it they didn't they didn't like want to come down so that didn't happen for like it was supposed to be in may or something like that and then we had another offer for Hermanson. Hermanson, we uh, for July 18th, but um, we accepted the fight, and their their side, I guess, didn't. So that got that got pushed away, and then they called back with August 1st, Derek Brunson. 
I think Derek had a, a it was his wedding if I'm not mistaken oh, yeah. Yeah. so which was which was okay they said you guys wait but we didn't want to wait so they gave us an offer yeah and every offer didn't go didn't go through so yeah. we could have saw you in Fight Island we could have yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you could have almost him. so you were pretty adamant on Brunson based off of kind of positioning and everything yeah. like that too yeah yeah and now I see kind of a foreshadow potentially if everything goes as play if everything goes the golden boy Way. Way. <laughs> and and uh, I see a potential match in the future. You brought up his name. You yeah. brought up his name earlier. I mean, possibly, possibly. We like to predict these types of things. Yeah. We like to see how the division goes out, <laughs> all that type of matchup. Is there any kind of dream fight? Is there any kind of matchup that a fighter that you want to fight? Not necessarily because they have the belt, but someone that you want to fight for your legacy when it's all said and done. I remember saying it to Helen. Uh, Yoel was one of the yes. dream fights, right? Yeah, that I like. You did tell I think me, he's a, yeah. He was, he's a really good fighter and like he's very talented and that was like one of the fights even though he's not a champion like that's like a it's like still a legend something fight. yeah it's something that I, I would love to do in the future is he the only one to ever want to fight you because we, we were talking <laughs> with Paul right. Felder last week like who, who wants calls to fight? Yoel? well second because the champ wanted to fight <laughs> yeah, him too yeah, yeah, yeah. was that the most boring championship fight you've ever seen yeah. yeah yeah like if you look at it as a fan yeah it was boring but then I, I can understand why like Izzy fought the way he did. Like he's the champion, so and Yoa Yoa didn't like bring the fight bring, to him. Yeah, bring the fight to him and he kicked him with the leg kicks and like kept his distance, touched him up a little bit and got the win. I've watched that because I recently I think the UFC played uh as because it was his fight week, it was Whitaker's fight week. I, they replayed the Whitaker Yoel Romero battles. I've watched both the fights and I remember just thinking Certain rounds, I don't remember if it was early on in the fight. I do remember it was early on in the fight. I don't remember if it was the first or second round, but you could see moments of you all just sitting there waiting for Whitaker to bring the fight to him, yeah. not bringing the fight there. Yeah. It's just part of his strategy to yeah. some extent. And it's like Yoel style. Like sometimes he waits, he waits, and then he explodes all of a sudden. Like you don't know, you don't know what Yoel shows up every time. Uh, you don't, and you see, he's, he likes to be unpredictable. We yeah. watched it too in Anaheim when he fought Paulo Costa. Like or he, he pointed. He pointed in a different Paulo direction. Looked. Paulo looked and then he went after him. <laughs> veteran That's tricks. Funny. It's that like human vet <laughs> veteran tricks. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very, very unique and different. Yeah. Um, is there anything you guys want to bring up to, by the way, open forum for you guys? I know we've been drilling you with a bunch of questions <laughs> for 50 plus minutes. Nah, <laughs> not, ready, not, we're ready to go. We're ready to we, go. That's it, yeah. It's, it's Tuesday of fight week. We're ready for Saturday, gonna weigh in Friday, fuel up, and then Saturday, don't miss it. Anybody who, who's tuning in, do, do not miss the fight. Uh, I'm fully prepared. It's the best mentally and physically I've ever been. Uh, I know I always say that after each fight, but it's because it's true. Because after every fight, I feel like I, I improve physically and mentally, so... I'm ready. I'm ready to put on a show. And one more thing. Happy birthday to Dana. Today yeah, is yeah, happy birthday. You brought up happy the birthday. Birthday to Dana White. Yeah, Dana happy White. birthday to the Dana. boss, man. We love you. And <laughs> all that he's doing, you know, through these times Amazing. for us mm -hmm. to fight. And he's always been next to my, you know, next to me. Anything hard days, good days in the UFC. Dana's honestly been one of the guys that always gave me a call and said, Edmund, you're going to do this again. And now I have Edmund here with me, you know. So he's been a That's blessing. Great revolutionizing yeah. the sports world he is mm -hmm. showing how yeah. to do a successful bubble now we're saying i don't i doubt they're gonna finish an nfl season you're seeing all oh, of his yeah. issues with baseball too major league baseball yeah. i think 17 players from the miami marlins have tested positive now wow basketball players i think they're they're escaping yeah. the orlando bubble yeah <laughs> I, felt yes. I saw i saw ba basketball play there was this one basketball player that i don't know who it was he apparently like left that bubble to go to like a strip club Lou Williams. yeah Lou. <laughs> It's, and he's it's, like, I went for wings, he said, right? It's crazy. <laughs> they, hey, they, they, have, wings. they have to get it in. They, they, they love their women. They, they can't be yeah, disciplined yeah, yeah. And, and stay still. I, I, Helen and I were talking about, I felt safer in Abu Dhabi than we do here in America. Yes. We were, we were uh, quarantined for 48 hours as soon as we wow. got there. Wow. Mm -hmm. And literally the locals there were quarantined for 14 days in this yes. bubble. Damn. It's it was insane, and we all ha we have to get certain bracelets. We got mm -hmm. seven COVID nineteen tests. Wow. While we were there. Yes. wow, seven. It COVID was such tests. a great experience overall. And wow. they asked you too, would you like the nose or the uh, the mouth too? They gave you the choice. Oh, which they gave you the nice. yeah. What are they What are they doing here? You know, I, I, I think, think mouth. I think they're going to do mouth? the mouth there yeah. too. Okay. And also with you guys too, this will be a unique experience too because you have the portable saunas. It's connected oh, yeah. to the room. Yeah. You never have to like leave, leave your room. room or go across the hall. It's going to be a unique fight experience yeah, for you guys. Yeah, I'm excited. We're going to head to the hotel after here. 
That's right. I'm super glad you guys stopped by here before that all happened. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you for having thank us. You thank, you thank you guys, guys. for having us. Appreciate it. A yeah, lot. absolutely. Helen, uh, final thoughts. Um, I'm just really excited, you know, to watch you headline this weekend against Derek Brunson. Really thank appreciate uh, both of your time. And kind of like what we just addressed, coming fresh off Fight Island, we had such a great experience. So I just want to kind of re-emphasize on that. And we might be going back there in September, October. Oh, so no there's way. a quick turnaround. Maybe. Wow. we Nothing's official yet, but there is. Maybe you fight over there, maybe, too. Maybe, maybe. Maybe that happens. Yes, sir. First Saturday night, and then the rest we'll see. Of course. Handling business one fight at a time. Yes, sir. Episode 26 of the Schmozone podcast. I didn't say that at the beginning. I'm saying that now. I still like this old school Golden Boy I'm going to get you a new one. That, that one's an OG shirt. So OG, I'll get you that's new one. why we're wearing it. <laughs> you guys are the pros, and including Helen too. Um, episode 26, the Schmozone. We're out. <laughs>